Hello everybody, I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Today we're going to be looking at a potential Atlantic hurricane here over the next few days. Now, if this is a hurricane, it's mainly going to uh, be probably a low-end Category 1. Uh, and a lot of these models actually bring it to a middle to high-end tropical storm. And a couple of them actually bring it to about a Category 1 or so with some of these model runs. Now, there are a couple of models that bring it a little bit higher. And that's why I'm putting the chance for a Atlantic hurricane. It definitely uh, is a, one of the earlier. Uh, hurricanes that we have seen in the Atlantic the National Hurricane Center already putting out a 90% chance of this developing uh, into something in some sort of tropical cyclone over the next few days Many of the models very uh, have a wide range of possibilities, bringing it from anywhere from southern Texas to about Florida or so, uh, and even into the Caribbean. So we have a lot of different uh, ways this uh, system could move. Now, the reason I really uh, th this really caught my attention was that a few days ago, just about two days ago, the uh, the European model is actually putting out about a 10% chance from all the ensemble models, which is about uh, about 30 uh, to 40 ensemble models. I don't know the exact number, but they were putting out uh, uh, about a 10 to 15% chance of uh, seeing some hurricane force wind speeds. Today, you're seeing a 30 to 35% chance from the European model, and we're still only five to seven days out from this event. So the fact that those models have so much certainty that you will see uh, potentially hurricane force wind speeds, it's almost a given that you'll see tropical storm force wind speeds. A lot of these models showing that you have about a 70 to 80 percent chance of that from the European model. That really caught my attention because if we keep on seeing these increases with time, we could potentially get to a 50 percent chance, a 70 percent chance, and then maybe uh, we'll even be at the point where it's declared a uh, Atlantic hurricane. So we'll be talking about all of that in today video so we're going to start off here with your uh, National Weather Service. We have red flag warnings in effect for parts of Nevada, Utah, and into Colorado there. We have uh, some uh, excessive heat warnings for parts of southern Arizona. Uh, but other than that, it's very quiet over uh, for the National Weather Service uh, in terms of warnings and watches and advisories. So here's your five-day graphical outlook from the uh, National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. They're putting out a 90% chance of seeing some Development, uh, development from these systems uh, in in this uh, part of the Atlantic Ocean in the Gulf of Mexico here. So you do see we have a fairly good chance over parts of uh, of the uh, Gulf of Mexico to see some de development just east of Mexico. There they are putting a 90% chance of development here. This was actually that system that I talked about two days ago or so uh, over parts of uh, it was at that point in the eastern Pacific. It transferred over the Mexican Peninsula and that actually moved over over into the Atlantic so it is a bit confusing uh, finding these resources because you have kind of uh you have resources from the Pacific uh, Ocean, and then you also have them from the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, you actually, I'm pretty sure this was named uh, Tropical Storm Amanda, I believe, in the Pacific. Uh, and now it's moving into the Atlantic, and this uh, will be the letter C uh, for your Atlantic Hurricane Names list. So here is uh, currently where it is located, and it is uh, currently on the Mexican Peninsula, uh, and it is going to be moving off to shore in just a little bit. Now, here's your model guidance from uh, these models, and they are actually bringing this further to the north. Now, before we do look at um, more of these models, I just want to show you your visible satellite imagery here, and we actually do have some fairly impressive cloud cover. You can kind of see where that center of circulation is right around here by this point uh, as of when the satellite is uh, it being taken. You can see that defined circulation, but it is still a little bit unorganized and uh, not too uh, organized there. Now, here is your infrared satellite imagery, and this is actually showing you how cold your cloud tops are, the colder your cloud tops are, that means the more that they're going to be rising, and that's really the more intense that your system is going to be. And you do see on the eastern side of this, and then even on the northern side a little bit, you are seeing some very, very cold cloud tops, and these would indicate some uh, very, very uh, intense, uh, intense storminess over this area. And and you can really uh, tell uh, a little bit easier where the system is really developing on this infrared satellite. And then finally, I just want to show you your water vapor loop. And this is uh, over uh, parts of the Mexican Peninsula. And, and you see over the eastern most part of the Mexican Peninsula, almost into the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. You see we do have some uh, very high water, uh, a lot of water vapor uh, over those areas. So... 
here is your model track guidance from a combination of these models. Now, some of these models bringing this uh, to the south uh, into uh, parts of the Pacific again, and those are really the outliers. Most of these models actually want to bring this uh, further to the north, and even if these models went out a little bit longer, you would see that they would actually loop this back into the Atlantic at some point. So pretty much all these models bring this into the Atlantic, whether that be uh, within the next 48 hours, and some of these models that loop it back around, delaying the system, uh, and that would actually help it strengthen a little bit more. So we'll ha uh, we'll have to see about that, uh, but definitely it's, it looks like it's going to be mainly an Atlantic uh, system by this point. So I want to show you one of these more uh, intense models and one of the models on the higher end scale and then we'll look at one that's kind of in the middle which would be the GFS model and then we'll look at your European ensemble models and see what they are showing in terms of this. So the HWRF this is usually one of those higher end models that usually shows some very very intense storms uh, and Actually, last year it showed this with Dorian, uh, if you guys remember Hurricane Dorian, and that was actually pretty accurate with it. So sometimes uh, you kind of have to take this with a grain of salt. Usually when you get a couple more models uh, along with it showing some stronger uh, uh, tropical storms, that's when you can really, really trust it. This is one of those uh, hurricane models that we use uh, when we're looking at these uh, hurricanes. So this, this is kind of one of your worst case scenarios uh, storms. Now, the HWRF model wants to bring this to, this would be a tropical storm by this point it has 34 uh 34 uh not winds by this point and that would be about 38 miles per hour and it even has some wind speeds up to about 50 knots which would be right around 60 miles per hour and you see even intensifies into a very intense tropical storm if not a low-end category one hurricane then it continues you see something that i really want to note i, I want to really uh point out here is look how uh, you have uh intense wind speeds on all uh, sides of the system now uh, kind of what we saw with those previous uh, tropical storms, you really had it lopsided onto the eastern side of it. Uh, the eastern side of this uh, of these storms really had the most intense wind speeds, but with this one, you see it's very well rounded and it has uh, those wind speeds on all sides of this uh, system. So it is a very well rounded system. This would be by uh, June 4th, and now by June 5th, this is when it's really uh, strengthening. Anywhere in those purples, that's where you're seeing a potentially hurricane force wind speeds in knots and that would be uh, right around 72 uh, or 74 miles per hour there and then as we continue it starts to move uh, further and further to the north this would be by June 6th and then uh, by June uh, but uh, right around by June 7th it is trying to move on to the this would be Texas right here it is a very zoomed in view and I can't really change that that's just something with the model uh, but I can't really change that but uh, th this model and a couple of other models want to bring this into the coastal areas of Texas but a lot, of, a lot of other models bringing it somewhere into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, some even bring it as far east as Florida. But by this point, at, at its peak, it was at right around about uh, 70 or so knots, which would be right around 80 miles per hour. It was, it, luckily it is out to sea by the point that it reaches its hurricane intensity, uh, and we'll have to see, this model doesn't go out far enough to, for us to see what actually happens when it does, uh, w when it does actually reach impact and, and uh, landfall on the Texas coast, according to this model, uh, but those wind speeds would weaken, and it wouldn't really be too uh, intensive a system by the point it's making landfall, and by the point it uh, moves inland, really it would probably be a storm surge issue uh, for areas in the a, a, a coastal te uh, coastal Texas region now Here's what the GFS is showing, and the GFS is more of a uh, less robust situation uh, or uh, or uh, kind of a, a scenario here. And you see, the GFS wants to bring this, a, it's a lot more lopsided to the eastern side. Like I was talking about with those other systems, you have those in, uh, those tropical storm force wind speeds on the northern and the eastern side of this, and you have those very strong winds on the eastern side, which would be right around 50 miles per hour. Now, this is uh, one of those models that uh, kind of curves it back around to Texas so by this point it's south of Louisiana by Sunday June 7th and then by uh, Tuesday June 9th the GFS putting this very weak it wouldn't even be a tropical storm by this point but it is bringing it to uh right around the louisiana te uh, texas border uh, in terms of where it's going to be making landfall uh, potentially by the gfs so th by this point it would be a very very weak system uh the reason i put it, a hurricane in the uh, thumbnail and in the title is because uh, by some point a lot of these models strengthen it to a high-end tropical storm and usually when we uh or even a hurricane uh in a couple of these models 
and usually when we get uh, closer to these events, these models start to actually ramp up their wind speeds, and uh, we saw that last year with Hurricane Dorian, and we see that with a lot of different storms here, so Something else that I want to show you, here are your GEFS tracks, and they bring it anywhere from Texas to about the panhandle of Florida. A lot of them bring it as a fairly intense storm, uh, about a, uh, a, about a high-end tropical storm, uh, maybe a, a mid, uh, mid, uh, middle tropical storm, potentially even some uh, lower-end category ones. Now, here's your GEPS uh, tracks, and I believe this is the Canadian ensembles, and this one actually has a little bit more intense moving to Louisiana and Texas there. And then here are your model intensity guidance. You see, we do have a, a, a fair amount of models that bring it to about 50 to 60 knots. And if uh, and we see this a lot with these storms. They do actually increase with time uh, with these wind speeds. And potentially, we could get into that Category 1 status. Uh, if it is going to be a hurricane, it's going to probably be a low-end Category 1. I don't really expect anything much higher than that. Now, here is your uh, European uh, ensemble models and what it's showing. So, this is your chance of seeing a tropical dep depression form uh, within the next uh, few days. So, this is uh, your chance uh, for uh, when it's still just entering the Atlantic. And you see we have about a 80 to about 90% chance in those dark reds and oranges. So, that's a very likely chance that it'll turn into a tropical depression. But as it moves uh, up the coast, uh, and this model wants to bring it to about coastal Texas and Louisiana, it still has about a 70 to about 80 percent chance. Uh, that means 70 to 80 percent of these models are uh, of these European ensemble models show it impacting parts of coastal Texas and coastal Louisiana with at least 20 knot wind speeds, uh, which would be right around 24, 26 knots or 24, 26 miles per hour, and that will be impacting parts of coastal Texas there. And you see it moves uh, further to the north, and it's still has those 20 knot wind speeds over parts of uh, eastern Texas and eastern Oklahoma, uh, w uh, even when it's well inland by that point. Now, here is your uh, chance of tropical storm force wind speeds, which is about 34 knots or so, uh, and you see that's uh, a little bit lower probabilities, but still you have some very decent chances uh, of this becoming a tropical storm. Uh, you have about a uh, 65 to about 70 percent chance of seeing those tropical storm force wind speeds, uh, and mo most of these models impacting parts of uh, Texas and Louisiana, some outliers again moving uh, further east in the Gulf, uh, on, in the uh, coastal Gulf areas, uh, and then that moves further inland as well, and now this is really uh, what I'm, I'm paying attention to, is uh, the chances of seeing 64 knots or greater wind speeds, and you're in those blues, that's a 30% chance, and you see that's over coastal Texas, uh, and that would even move potentially into coastal Louisiana but even surrounding there, we have about a 20 to 30 percent chance, which is quite uh, significant. We have uh, between 20 and 35 percent chance of this, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this actually gets ramped up with the newer model runs that they do with this, uh, because definitely it is. Uh, th this has increased about 20 percent chance uh, over the past two days, and we are still quite a ways out from this system potentially making landfall. We're about uh, seven days, six, seven days out, so we do have. A lot of time for these models to really ramp up the intensity of these systems. Now that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you never miss a video when I do upload. Anyways guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.